Hello there. Uh, welcome back to the. Uh, we've got uh, another guest for you. Um, this is uh, Connor Boyle. Hello. Um, you want to say hello? Hello. How you doing? <laughs> um, okay. Thank you for coming along. Uh, sorry for the confusion. I we nearly didn't make it. Um, if you wouldn't mind uh, just introducing yourself and telling everyone a little bit about yourself. Um, my name is Connor Boyle. I'm a comic book artist. I've been. Um, freelance professional artist for about 10 years. Um, I've worked on uh, books for Heavy Metal and Titan Comics that have been um, published. I have um, been doing books for um, all manner of um, clients, really, um, for the sort of the 10 year period that I have been freelance and then a few bits prior to that. Um, but basically, not necessarily, um, you know, drawing Mm. Spider-Man and Batman, as much to my nephew's regret, um, <laughs> but uh, more comics that will sort of um, be really interesting kind of stuff um, and very varied, uh, not necessarily for the comics publishers, but for clients. Go down upstairs. Um, Ricky, so, uh, sorry. You're on the phone. <laughs> Sorry. Hang up, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, so I've, I've been do I've done all sorts really. Um, yeah. My my sort of career path. I uh, for the viewers, I was uh, writing all this up prior to sort of and over and say this is a list of things I've done. I'm like, wow, I really have kind of gone all over the place in terms of what you can do with comics and um, uh, wildly varying different clients. Um, that's an interesting camera view. Well done. Yeah, Ricky, what are you I doing? Know. <laughs> we got you. Well, I've got to You're place. interrupting us. I know, but I was going to join in the call <laughs> on my phone, and I thought I... it would automatically come up with my face camera, but it's come up with the other side. So if I look camera. at it like this, yeah, it's. You're looking uh, terrifying. You know what? I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna fine. leave it. <laughs> we can, we Ricky can just wait. basically. He ran downstairs so that so he could join in without there being a reverb or something. So oh, just trying to get involved. Yeah, absolutely. But sorry. Yeah, no. If if he can if he can hop on, that's cool. Um, yeah. So I I no. I mean, the main thing I realised right now this list was um, I have probably led a more varied uh, ten years of of being freelance um, hmm. than perhaps most comic guys would. Um, yeah. But at the same time, it, it's kind of a testament to just how much you can do with comics in different um, industries and with different yeah. clients. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, uh, lots of different things. Uh, I'm, I have a list just here to remind me of what it is that I've actually done. Um, so, yeah, I've done, um, so uh, loads of indie stuff while I kind of figured out what it is that I actually do. Um, a graphic novel for the National Trust for Scotland um, about the Battle of Bannockburn. That was fun. Mm -hmm. um, loads of stuff for the English National Trust off the back of that. Uh, then drawing Hookjaw for Titan Comics and then um, almost getting published by Dark Horse. Long story. Um, then uh, working for uh, doing a, a sort of a motion comic kind of thing, which was interspersed with video for a, a heavy metal singer called Taya who used to be the singer in Nightwish, and then not related, yeah, yeah. but also then um, uh, about a year afterwards, I think, um, doing a strip for the um, 35 years of Megadeth. And basically, uh, Dave Mustaine from Megadeth decided he, he wanted a, a comic strip for every year that, that you know, and representative of the band and... and, and um, Basically, this 350-page tome was made in conjunction with um, Heavy Metal. And uh, and I got to be part of that as well, which was a lot of fun. And, um, yeah, so all manner of different things and not just drawing the same stuff over and over again, which is yeah. keeps it keeps your interest. Even if you just casually... Um... Look over your your prof uh, your portfolio. It's massively varied. I mean, I'm not saying that most people's aren't, but you know, uh, just 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 trying to get some of the art for our little posters today was harder than most because you know I, I'm not you know you some people um, they they focus or they don't focus. They end up on one thing or another, and that's there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. You know, you got your 2000 AD staples and things. 
I was almost spoiled for choice just using just little samples of images, you know. And um, but I didn't know. I, I I knew I knew a little bit about some of the stuff you did. Obviously, I knew about Hookjaw and things like that. Mm. I think that's where we first started chatting when you were doing covers for them again. I think it was, yeah. And yeah. um, I I didn't know about the Megadeth stuff or the Nightwish stuff, though. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, it was um at night the tire from Nightwish. Obviously, she went solo, and then she decided she wanted to do a Christmas album. <laughs> Because I guess that's you know the next step Gross. from from yeah. from being in a band like Nightwish, um, but she uh, she decided she wanted to do this, and then um, it was actually Pete Rogers uh, who who's also you know a veteran of the indie scene in uh, in the UK. Um, he was looking around for artists to be involved in that, and, um, and the idea was she was going to do oh uh, the name of the song escapes me, but it's kind of like a. Uh, traditional sorry p if you're watching this uh tr- like a traditional <laughs> christmas standard kind of a thing and it was it was incredible like we saw some of the footage of what they'd shot and she'd already you know she'd done her part of the video and it, and it was up to pete's uh mm. the company that pete works with and they were doing sort of this sort of motion comic that was going to be interspersed so she was going to be looking at this book as she's singing her song and um, and then you go into the book, and then it's all the artwork that I had done. So I I drew it, and then a friend of mine, Matt Sof, did all the coloring, and um, and then we saw, we saw the video at the end, and it was crazy. It was, but it was really cool. And you kind of like, oh wow, oh they really did put the artwork in there. Okay, well this is this is interesting. So yeah, it's fun to occasionally just look at it on YouTube, going wow, this this this, this like career has some weird twists and turns as it goes along oh no he's frozen he's yeah, still there, mate. i know I, I, it's, uh, it's fine yeah uh, we, we yeah we're, we're lagging a little bit i've noticed but we're okay. pretty cool um i think i think it's just because we're so far away <laughs> um no no it's cool i was i did notice that it, it, your audio is still going it's just the video but uh i think we'll, uh, we'll survive good to know. um i think we got about 20 computers running at the moment the internet um, round here so is yeah not the best I think we've got a Bitcoin oh. farm up the street. You know, it's. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps you never know. Um, we, uh, yeah, we've um, we've got a lot, a lot of things to. I can ask you about that. I mean, um, I, I'm more into Megadeth than uh, than Nightwish, but uh, both you know, both fantastic ideas. Though. I mean, mm. uh, how much of that was yours? Then how much did you produce to uh, for uh, for the Megadeth thing? Was it Megadeth was page um, or two? Or? It was a 10 page strip written by um, David Bailey, who's a 2008 writer and writes for um, Vertigo and DC. Um, mm. And um, he, I can't remember now, what it was, me and him had done a thing for Dark Horse, which never got published in the end. But um, the editor on that was Hannah Mean Shannon, and she said um, she got in touch with us and said, Do you want to be part of this thing? And like, we've always talked about doing other projects, and it was just like, Absolutely, we'll be in for this. And um, yeah, so it was like 10 pages to describe one song. And then like everybody got 10 pages and and, and it was a very fast turnaround. It was like uh, 10 pages in 12 days from scratch to full colour. Uh, not hanging around. Um, no. And um, yeah, that was a bit of an eye opener. And it had to be, oh, that was the other thing. It's, I've got this book here, actually, I'll show you. Um, it also had to be... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, 12 by uh is it 12 by 12 i think basically yeah. for an album like so a vinyl was, yeah yeah so the vinyl like you could get like you can see the size of this thing right so uh the ultra deluxe version of this came with like half a dozen records and you know what whatever else so you had to work on this crazy template which is 12 by 12 and, and you're sort of going oh wow yeah <laughs> on on, a, on an ipad which i was working on at the time that that was taking all the memory you could hear this thing starting to sort of like steams coming out the edges of it um but yeah so that was that everybody did 10 pages and there's so i, I think it's 35 stories then one one for each year of of megadeth and um yeah and then we yeah that was that was kind of it it was it was all done in like two weeks it was a, it was a crazy kind of just had to put everything else down and just focus on this one story yep. um otherwise it just wasn't going to happen you know um but we got it done um i was quite proud of it actually i was just looking at it there this afternoon kind of going this is not terrible i like this which is rare for me but yeah that was one particular style yeah <laughs> 
was it uh, we, things like that with Nightwish and Megadeth? Are those uh, those influenced by your uh, interest in music in that type of genre? Um, or was it just because uh, of your connection to heavy metal and things like? Uh, um, I, uh, that's a good question. Um, I think music tends to just kind of pervade everything that I do. Um, uh, it's just been a. It's like like drawing and music has just been a constant all the way through my life. Um, if there's any way of crowbarring in some kind of little nod to a song nice. or a band in the background of a comic, I will probably put it in. Um, but those specifically, um, I don't think there was. It was neither of them had a lot of time on them like both of those projects it was very much we need it as quickly as possible so i don't think um there was too much time hanging around wondering about how it was going to look it was just literally just get it done make it as amazing as possible and then that's we're having a little bit of a problem sorry oh no sorry sorry is it all cracking up did you hear anything i said only a little bit sorry was that we're, we're apparently we're still clear so it's cool there we go yeah so yeah um i, I got that i was just worried because the visual went a little bit then but uh okay. sorry go, go it's ahead all right, don't worry don't worry yeah, you guys are doing amazing things so it's 24 hours right yes yeah it feels like 24 hours already <laughs> <laughs> you get like so cake go. cake at the halfway stage just to keep you going we had we had cake at the first stage we had cake before leaving the starting block so uh we're running on sugar at the moment so sugar and dr pep uh, uh, not dr pep a uh, fizzy fizzy drink yeah other um, brands are available so yeah yeah yes indeed no 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 advertising oh i saying that i am advertising i'm wearing uh talking about like music and things i uh, love and rockets uh, oh nice uh, you know so yeah um no, that, that is, yeah, you're saying music does pervade into things. I, I mean, I, I write and I do things, and obviously doing the convention stuff as well, I do find um, uh, music Music obviously helps. And it does It does affect not just my mood, but my the, my train of thought as well. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure about you. I mean, I'm guessing your taste might be similar if you know heavier stuff and things like that. Yeah, um, I, I, it can change your day, really. Um, I, I think if you, I think if you overcook it on one style of music, it can really sort of like, it can affect what you're what you're doing and, and into mm -hmm. the following day. I I, tr I do try to keep specific kind of music to whatever it is I'm doing. Um, yeah. Like, uh, so reading a script, it has to be in complete silence. Doing layouts has to be in complete silence because that's where I do all my work. Um, and then once you're into mm. pencils, then it can be, you can start to get loud music. By the time you're getting into colour and ink, I kind of, part of me is already, I have a very short attention span and part of me is already thinking about something else at that stage. And like, then you can have the proper loud stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I have, I tend to have it all divided up as much as I can. Do you have any uh, preferences to to artists and uh, and genres? Um, I like both kinds of music, you know, rock and country rock. and western. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I started. It. Yes, I did. Um, no, I, I basically, if I need to get going in the morning, um, then it's hard rock. Um, nothing else is going to do it. But in the afternoons, I need to turn it down again because because my brain just doesn't switch off when thinking about drawing and music and everything so i i do have to sort of start tempering things the later into the evening i go um otherwise i won't sleep i just won't sleep i'll be i'll be there at five o'clock in the morning still coming up with ideas not by choice it's just you know you have to keep the brakes on at some point otherwise otherwise you go a bit mad and i have done it before and it's not very nice I, I think that's something I should probably learn. Oh, <laughs> um, I think that's something I should learn because I mean, my, my taste in music is is massively um, uh, eclectic. I, that sounds like a boast, but um, my, I, I, I'm proud. My, I'm proud. My, my daughter's uh, 17, and she she digs post punk and goth and things like that stuff. I, I dig as well. But my music can literally go from at the moment it's uh, an indie band called The Shins, um, oh, yeah. uh, Finnish French pop pop 
synth pop band called The Doe. And yesterday, just randomly out of nowhere, just Napalm Death. Um, I just had a, one of my screensavers popped up. And I was like, I haven't listened to Napalm Death for a while. Oh, mate, you can't, so. you can't go wrong with a bit of that. We we saw him in a tent at download. It was what it was. Really? It, it was almost a religious experience. I, I'm not sure I've laughed so much at a, at a concert. Uh, it was it was amazing. I also saw. I also I'm sure saw, that might hurt their feelings if you if if, if Napalm, Napalm at Death said that. I heard you say that. I, I, I well that dude's got a sense of humour, you know. I'm not sure he'd be too too upset. I saw him at Glastonbury as well, and it was it was so funny to watch people kind of like who, you know. They were never gonna go to a Napalm Death concert by yeah. by choice, and they happened to be walking past in the middle of the Glastonbury, they were holding on to the daisies. You know, um, it was quite funny to see reactions of people just going, "What? What is yeah. this?" Um, but they're amazing live. Love them. I'd, I'd like to check them out. There's a bunch of bands I'd like to check out. Um, okay, I'll, I'll bring it back a little bit on top. Sorry, we're drifting. Right yeah. <laughs> I'll ask you. Um, I was going to ask you about. No, no, I thought it was cool. I, I, there, there was a there was a reason for that. I'll get back. To it in a moment um but uh i was gonna ask you just about how you uh you said disconnected press oh with um, lizzie. um i hope obviously lizzie's doing well as well of course yeah she says to say hello by the way um yeah uh disconnected was because um basically i got invited to a comic convention in maidstone uh run by a chap who ran a comic shop down there by the name of graham and he was a lovely guy and he said can you come down and be a guest uh i think there was a friend of mine john burdis uh, who was a, a regular to the shop had said, maybe get this guy along. So, you know, shout out to John. Um, and basically I came back after that, having met a load of people um, and had a great day and sort of said to Lizzie, next time we go to the con, come with me. This is it's going to be really fun. But Lizzie's not the kind of person who can just stand there and watch the world go by. That's not how she's wired. And she's basically said, well, no, if I'm going to go to a convention, I want to be able to do something. What can I do? And I was like, well, all right, write me a story and then we'll 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 make a little comic. Well, that got out of hand. Uh, so before we knew it, we had a we had an anthology <laughs> with, a bu- with a bunch of different creators. And then um, we said, well, we, now we now we have to have a table to sell the book. And and yeah kind of spiralled into Lizzie went away very quietly, didn't tell me, and wrote an entire separate anthology herself, uh, got a load of artists in there, and the proviso was they had to be, it had to be their first work ever. I don't you know. You made a monster. She, I don't know how she got hold of, I think it was five artists on that book, and then basically said, right, you're all hired, you draw these stories, we're going to make a book, and it'll be your first book as well, so you, you get to say, here I am in print. Um, it it just got out of control, and then it was like um, uh, thirteen anthologies in three years. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a roller coaster. I think I think by the end of it, we were kind of like, well, maybe we need a a, a break from just churning out of these books. But um, but that's yeah. kind of how it happened. It, it, Disconnected Press is is very very much Lizzie's sort of um idea that I hold on to for dear life as it seems to <laughs> rumble along i think that's the best yeah. way i can describe it um she's she's very much the the central the, the force behind everything i mean we did i can't remember now how many anthologies of, did it, it was supposed to, the original reef was supposed to be uh small towns with weird stories happening in them um we did a series of those and then a series of these sister anthologies that would go with them which were first time artists and then um, after that, it mm. turned into like a political satire and then a choose your own adventure and then sentient zombie space pigs. And yeah, it, that Disconnected was basically us kind of going, well, if we're going to do it, let's do it properly, I think is probably the best way I could describe it. That's cool. I mean, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's crazy to think you did three, three years as well. I mean, three in three years is probably crazy enough, knowing how much mm. effort takes to put an anthology together you're hurting cats most of the time aren't you so just uh, checking yes. as we as we look there's uh i'm just checking the uh the uh the chat that we got going as well going on oh. a separate screen so um this man this pete um saying uh hey connor hey. long time no see Absolutely. working with megadeth must have been a dream project any other bands or creative uh you'd like to work with oh there's a shout 
Um, man, that's a good question. I, let me get back to you on that. We've got, <laughs> how long have we got? We've got half an hour, right? Let me get back to you. Uh, think about it. Yeah, we've got another, another 40 minutes or so. Oh, I don't know. There was, there was, um, it was funny when the Megadeth thing was happening, uh, Hannah, our editor, had said there were a couple of other things po that possibly may happen and possibly may not. And I don't really want to say which ones did and which ones mm. didn't. But I was kind of going, here's my shortlist. Should these bands show up? <laughs> Can I please? <laughs> like, oh, no, that would be amazing. Um, so I do kind of keep an eye on those kind of books that are coming out because it's like mm. once they're announced i guess it's too late you know but i don't know that's a great question i will have to have a think about it but good to hear from you pete as well there you go um that's cool yeah we'll uh we'll, we'll put a pin in that then yeah. um uh <laughs> just jot it down Sorry, and remind you. yourself it's yeah just you blown your mind. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I think the tricky thing as well is a lot of bands I've seen uh, do their own thing. Um, you get a lot of, uh, like, um, Danzig's done a movie recently, I remember he did a lot of comic books of his own mm -hmm. as well. So I guess sometimes people don't get a look-see because you know, some, maybe some of the artists kind of control things a bit too much. Uh, I have no idea. I, my experience of doing the music-based stuff is that it just really is blind luck. Um, you know, um, Taya, I think, as I recall now, I think I may have even got in touch. I think Pete was scouting around for potential artists, and maybe I just said hi. And, like, you know, and you know, we knew each other before that. And I think sometimes it, it comes down to right place, right time, but then sometimes it's like somebody will drop you an email and go, like, I think I'm in the not too distant past i have had emails where it's like do you want to do this thing and you're like oh hey how you doing and you kind of go that was weird um how did that come about a lot of it's that a lot of it's kind of um just just pure chance really well that kind of comes into another question that just popped up no daddy cool has just asked what's the strangest request for providing artwork what's the weirdest thing somebody's asked you to do uh this is a family show, right? Yeah, yeah. Try and keep it, you know, maybe um, suggestive. Um, I've had some interesting requests of things to do, most of which I've turned down. Um, Leave it at that. <laughs> there are some people out there with some money and they want very specific things. Um, yeah, and they always happen to be rich. It's weird. Um, money corrupts, I guess. Could do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the weirdest thing I can say, oh boy, oh, I'm still <laughs> stuck on the music one. Um, where it is. Okay, well, I did a movie production thing last year, um, and while it wasn't weird, I mean, it was it was somebody's big kind of universe that they wanted to get down on. Well, it was supposed to be a film, and then pandemic kicked in, and then they decided mm. they wanted to do a comic with it. I think that was weird in the sense that the client there had this universe. Of a, of a, like, imagine having the universe and then trying to explain it to somebody else. <laughs> you know, it was, it was that was a weird process where you kind of going, you have planned out every single minute detail of an entire universe in which this comic or movie, as it may work out, has been has been, you know, you, you've you figured it all out. Mm. How do you keep that in in one brain without going just you know? Yeah. Unfortunately, I can't tell any anything more about that because it's done production and I've uh, signed NDAs and stuff. But I think that was weird in the sense of like having an entire universe of and a story in it. Normally, when you get a script with comics, it's you, you've got the idea and, and a bit of background, and that's kind of as far as you go. You know? Um, I think that would probably be the the one where I was just kind of going, "Wow, that's just so much." Yeah, it was um, it was fun. It's fun to do, but yeah, I don't know if I had an entire universe of of, of a thing in my head. That might just drive you crackers eventually. Yeah, I, get, I mean, that's what, sorry, go on. I was no, say it's just, uh, it's it's. It, I I know from doing writing before. You know, we uh, me and Ricky kind of I think we share a brain sometimes because we. Um, 
uh, we 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 live the concepts we kind of come up with. I mean, we we were asked by a friend um, to just do a little short, and uh, I can't really go into it. Just it's just too big. But basically, it stopped being a short, and it was just going to be a comic strip. <laughs> and eventually, we realized it can't be. It we wouldn't be doing it service, and so we. Right. You have like notebooks, like got one here now, just filled with with stuff, and then uh, drop boxes and whatever whatever we are at the time, you know, the back of my hand and things like that. Um, <laughs> those tattoos, not not notes on my hand. Um, <laughs> but we um, you know, we we have to put them somewhere. So I know what you mean. Otherwise, they just they just I, start, I think they start seeping out somewhere. I, th- um, I think there's 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 a there's a there's a sort of a, a tired old adage of like every artist has their own book that they eventually want to draw. And I do, I've got, there's a, there's a filing cabinet sitting just here. And you know, those old style box files that are kind of like that sort of size. I've got two of them and they're full. And that's this story that I've got. It, I wrote it in like the days of black and white. It's so old, but I thought this was the best story in the world. (laughs) I must have ripped off every single kind of, franchise and movie and animation you could think of mm. i didn't think i was doing it at the time but you know it's still sat in the bottom of the drawer and i'm just it's too heavy to take out and it's, that's where it's going to stay for now well <laughs> you've um you have you have worked on some interesting things i mean i when that's what i was going to say about um when i was saying about the uh the this uh the influences um I'll ask you a bit more about influence now. It's like uh, things working on like things like Lockjaw and uh, some just some of the art that you've got in your portfolio, you know, things like um, Pyramid Head and things like that. Mm. Um, it's uh, you know you've got a lot of uh, uh, it's like it feels heavy metal. Your music, uh, you you your art seems very heavy metal. Seems very uh, influenced uh, by like I don't know like a dark fantasy type of uh, vibe. But I was going to ask you about Hookjaw actually. How did you get onto that? I mean, because Hookjaw's Gotta be, gotta be about forty years old now, something like that. Surely. Yeah, yeah, it was in with the old, the old action comics back in the late seventies. Um, Hookjaw was that's quite an easy story, really. I was asked. Um, Steve White, who's the editor on Hookjaw to begin with, um, it was it was his kind of. He wanted to do it, and I um, think I'm allowed to say this. Sorry, Steve, if you're watching, but Steve was going to draw it. And Steve, if you don't know Steve White, go and look him up. Incredible artist. In his own right, it like he, the, his sharks are amazing, and so basically, um, while a while before, probably I don't know, six months before it, I started getting emails about it. He'd shown me like the first four pages, I think, that he'd done, mm-hmm. and it was full color, traditional. Um, I think it was color pencils and pastels. I think he was doing it with, but he showed me it, and I was just like, oh my god is that what I think it is? And he was like, yeah. I was like, take my money. I want to see you. <laughs> and he was like, oh, thanks very much. And he was all very excited about it. And then um, I didn't ask too much about how they'd got hold of the license to do that. Cause I thought it's not my business. Yeah. And then, and then he emailed um, a good six months after that point. And um, sorry if I'm shivering. It's really cold in this room. Oh, We've been out all day. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, um, so uh, yeah, he emailed out the balloon. He said, um, "By the way, um, this thing's going to go ahead, but do you want to draw it, or do you want to do a trial?" I think I had to do three pages because I think Titan preferred to see like a a, a kind of a, a rehearsal. Can you draw yeah. it? And so my first reaction was, "No, you're supposed to be drawing this. Aren't you? I'm not taking a gig out. Never take a gig from another artist, right?" But he said, "No, I'm not going to do it anymore." Um, because reasons. And um, so I thought, I can't turn this down. And it was literally, it was literally just like he said, Do you want to do it? I, I did three sample pages, sent them in. And then a couple of weeks later, I was like, Did you get those samples? And he was like, Oh, no, we've been discussing it. Yeah, now it's all going ahead. And I was like, Oh, oh okay. It, right, it's on then. Um, and then the next thing I know was um, getting the script through. And, um, and that was it. We were off. Which is, a, that was a funny day, got to be honest, because you're kind of going, wow, I was drawing, I'm drawing, I was reading that stuff when I was yeah. a kid, you know, it's kind of weird, but no, it's good fun. 
I guess it's always going to, you're always going to have that moment where you then, if you're doing something like that, you're going to have to just take a step back and go, how, how far, look how far I've come. We were speaking to uh, Nick Brokenshire uh, a couple guy. of weeks back. Oh, he's a really nice guy. And he was saying about how he, he only lived, he lived a, a town over or something from where, um, uh, I forget who, what the company was. Um, that you'd eventually work for as part of 2000 AD and, and, and prior to 2000 AD. And um, it's just crazy to think that you don't know where you're going to end up. You know, he moved from Scotland to South America and then back again and ended up in this town as a kid that he'd eventually work for, you know, these people. So you just don't know where you're going to go. Um, so you, you don't. I mean, um, th- that's that's the thing about being freelance is that you, you, you can have a, a, an idea of where you want to go and various yeah. stops that you want to make along the way. But you have to be open to the idea that in order to get from here to here, you're going to go over there somewhere and then come back again, and then you're going to go over there and then come back again. It's, it's going to yeah. be like that. And I think as long as you embrace that, you're good. If you try and stay on that single path that you want to, you know, I'm only interested in doing this bit, you probably won't last very long. No. no. Um, I'm just reading one of the notes. I'm just trying to make sense of it. It's all right. <laughs> Oh yeah, there we go. Sorry, it was uh, it was earlier on. I've got a couple of other questions, and I I, I feel like I was missing one. There's uh, it was when you said about the iPad. Um, I wanted to get to it before I forgot. Basically, there's a question from um uh, Mune, uh who's uh, sorry Mue, who's one of our uh, who's been one of our um uh, horde winners. He's but won a lot of prizes today. Um, he's asked uh, for somebody who can uh, for anybody who colors linear uh, uh linear one an iPad as a hobby. That doesn't make sense. Sorry. Well, it does make sense, but I'm probably reading it wrong. Basically, are there any tips to up your game on the iPad for coloring? Or line art? Forgive me, yes. It cuts off the box. Oh, for coloring box. line art? Um, uh, to up yeah. your game? Um, on iPad. Are there any tips? Uh, get a process. And by that, I mean um, the fastest way to save time in terms of getting something from start to finish is to flat everything first. Learn how learn how 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 pro colorists do flatting on layers and locking layers and then using um, the layers to your advantage because that cuts so much and I I still forget it to to this day I'm working on a thing right now and I had to remind myself to flat first because it just it just saves time it's boring I really it's the one part of the entire process I just hate it's boring but it saves you time that would be the first thing I'd say. Uh, the other thing I would say would be in order to make your colors kind of sing, I'd say start messing about with putting color over the top of the line work. Now, by that, I mean, don't start coloring over some, some artists work. They're going to get annoyed, but learn to use, um, layers with, uh, like, uh, overlays. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know what, what package you're going to be using, whether you're in Procreate or um, Photoshop or whatever. The, the, the effects are roughly the same. It doesn't really matter what they're called. They, they'll have specific tricks that each each layer will do. So dump a load of orange in and then, and the, like, on a layer on top of the work and then mm-hmm. start mm-hmm. playing around with the settings on that layer. And you can get some really nice lighting effects. You can get some really nice kind of tonal effects. You can get... Mm-hmm. Tons of atmosphere by by like a single layer, and you can like start doing sort of. Let's see here. There's a window behind me, right? But, but I think I think it will come across. So there's a slight shine coming across yeah, here. Yeah, like this. <laughs> I thought it was on that's, the screen. Yeah, no, sorry, it's my window. Um, that's the kind of thing that you. That's the kind of thing that really makes. Uh, a, a, imagine this is a panel, and then you've got this kind of thing coming across here. Well, it would go over the line work because there'll be lines here, right? And mm. that's the sort of thing that you can really overcook it. But if you use it very, very minimally, it can just start to make your work pop. And then it'll give you lots of other ideas. If you start experimenting with those, you go, well, what do all these other ones do if I put them over the top? But don't ruin the artist's line work. That's kind of a no no. That's what I would say. If you're drawing don't it yourself, do like it. JJ Abrams would do. Exactly. Yeah. I would say ruin it completely if it's your own work, but not if it's somebody else's. Um, yeah, uh, um, it's Joe, our uh, friend Joe. He, uh, he says he uses uh, Procreate. So is that a, yeah, that's, that's fun. There we go. 
this is when I use I I um the day I got my iPad I put a thing up on Twitter and said what are the, what are the good art programs and my a friend of ours Steve Green he's a model maker and he m- makes movies and he works in movies and stuff and he said procreate best bet and it's 10 quid and you know oh, there's, yeah. there's no add-ons there's no subscription it's just 10 quid and it does amazing things and um i've used it for know, three or four years now i guess it's great there we go now you know i, I don't know. i'm looking there as if people can see me over there um <laughs> what did, uh you mentioned steve white what other influences mm-hmm. i'm guessing steve white's an influ- uh, influence to us oh, to mate, an if, if i could draw sharks like he draws sharks i would i would be I'd be delighted. My sharks fall way short of what you can do. Uh, so influences on work. Yeah, just uh, just uh, what other influences have you have you had? Um, my influences is a really weird discussion because you can say because it wanders into who's your favourite artist, and your favourite artist isn't necessarily your biggest influence, no. and vice versa. Um, so I could list you twenty artists that I love. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they're the, like when I have specifics when I'm when I'm drawing certain things, um, and if right hands right when I'm drawing hands, PJ Holden has has guided my ability to draw hands. If you look at PJ Holden's work, he does Judge Dread, tons of 2080 stuff. Image, look at how he draws hands. He draws the gnarliest hands with these big old knuckles and they've got all the little details in there and before that i couldn't draw hands and i was going this is really going to hold me back like when i was starting out and this little idea popped into my head it's like whose hands do you like so <laughs> i went i went looking around i was like pj does amazing hands and so basically when i draw hands i'm doing them the way p i think i'm doing them the way pj draws um and and it's very much kind of like little sort of like my influences kick in according to what it is that I'm doing. And then there are more general influences mm. over the top of what I would prefer it to look like once I'm finished with it, which it never is. Um, but I guess if, if we're talking about those, it would be um, the early work of Dave McKean to me is beautiful. Um, and yeah, Bill Sienkiewicz yeah. equally so. Um, so th- it would be that kind of for the kind of the wow factor and and the sort of the intricacy of the detail and the the sheer amount of color that goes into them you know um but to pull it all down to earth jock and lawrence campbell are my two Mm. mainstays Mm. of if you want this to look like it's actually fixed to the ground and has some gravitas to it some weight yeah yeah. That's that's good. That's a good description. I mean, uh, I'm just reading the notes. I know this is perfect uh, description. You're right. I mean, Jock just it does have it just adds weight. I mean, I like uh, I like how solid everything's. I'm reading um, uh, Batman Black and White. And I think he did a cover. Mm-hmm. I think he did a cover for Black White. And it's just it, it, with with the simplicity that he he deliver well not simplicity delivers so how how simply he can deliver something or make it seem simple anyway it's just always the wild yeah. factor is always there um, his 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 use of um uh panel dynamics and how he mm. decides to frame things how his approach to kind of sense of movement across a page is just a bit separate to everybody else and it's always a touchstone that i go back to if i'm yeah. kind of looking at a page and i'm going again this does what the writers asked me to do. It's just a bit boring. Mm. What, what do I do? And it's you just go and you just go away and look at Jock's work, and then you're like, okay, yep, right. Get rid of this panel. <laughs> Get rid of this panel. Right. Let's redraw those. Um, there, there's this sort of energy that goes into his stuff. Um, I remember reading the one of the first bits in um, Mega City Undercover, which is like a collection mm. of sort of the dread world stories and um it's uh it's this character called lenny zero and it's basically the first four pages are like i hadn't seen it before and i think it's one of his first one of the first things he did but it's reading it is like being slapped in the face it everything is just so dynamic and kind of doing stuff and you're just like that's amazing i'm gonna try and 
at least keep the idea of that energy. That's kind of what I want to do. And then with Lawrence Campbell's work, it's just like oh, le levels of kind of cinematic and, you know, weight, like you say, just incredible. Yeah. I, I guess you uh, you run the risk of if you're if you're too if you're starstruck by uh, by the people you're influenced with, you fear that you're never going to um, live up to them as well. I guess you know, so you know your style. I'm guess you love your style as well. You you're you're proud of what you do. So I guess that's what keeps you, keeps you going. Uh, not really. I tend to hate everything I've done. Like, <laughs> anything that's sold in six months, I, I, that's just I can't look at it anymore. Um, I think. In terms of you know how what you're saying there, it's interesting that you you can this is comes back to the influence thing. You could you can look at people's work and go, this is incredible. I'm never going to be that good. Or how I try and do it because that's just going to drive you crazy and you're never going to work again. How I try and do it is I sit there and go, how did he do that? Like that that mm. tiny little yeah. bit right there. What's gone into that? And I try and pull it apart and go from there, really. Yeah, I uh, I know what you mean. I, I I I write instead mostly. I mean, I can illustrate a little bit, but I I try not to. But I do sometimes sit there, and you're right. You see, you, um, you see a thumb. You see the way Jim Lee draws a boot, or. Uh, I don't know, uh, you know, some, something like oh, the way the way Jock draws, as you said, uh, panel arrangement and fluid movement through a panel, you know. And you're just thinking. Uh, I think me and Nick Brokenshaw were talking about um, Paul Pope, mm. the way he adds. There's a sort of a swagger, but a sagging, and, a, and a, like almost like a beanbaggy, puppeteery feel to some of his characters. He's got this weird kind of like strange feeling to the characters. And I remember seeing um, uh, the cover for Batman 100. Okay. And how he's basically just hunched oh. over these these drain pipes, you know. And I'm just thinking, I'm, I'm buying that. I'm buying that because I don't care what that book's about. I just love that cover. And if that's what the book <laughs> is about, you're stealing my things. Yeah, that's a sale. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it's it's. It, I mean, that's inspiration. You know, you, you can. That's worth its weight in gold. And that can looking at that hopefully then makes you go away and go right. I'm gonna I'm gonna write the, the next thing I do and it's going to be amazing because you're inspired to do something yeah. you can be you can be energized by other people's work um but you have to choose to be energized by it it's like a <laughs> there's a million different hippie-ish ways of looking at it but it's but it's basically you get to choose how that influences you yeah I guess it's a springboard really it's, isn't it yeah it can be poison in your veins or it can be um it can be pure inspiration it's just you get to choose at what it's going to be you know mm -hmm. if you see something that you just look at like um and any anybody you hit work you just go how how is that even possible how i don't mm -hmm. understand how they did that i quit you know it's a perfectly normal reaction when you see somebody who's amazing um but that is your decision or you can sit there and go wow well, i want to get i want to go home and, and do something you know yes yeah no i, I agree um, talking about uh, things that kind of segues onto the next point slightly. Um, what would be your uh, what would be your dream project? I know you said that there was something almost with uh, with the Dark Horse, which I'm guessing would yeah. have carried you some way. Um, yeah, uh, dream project. I don't, hmm, oh. What would you like to work on? But you haven't yet. Oh, there's a list. I I have a list right here on the wall of you know, the the ultimate stuff I would like to do. Um, but I'm not telling you what's on that list. Um uh, <laughs> I would I would I would love to work for 2000 AD because that's to me that's childhood ambition. That's uh from sitting with my cousin who is an incredible artist who, you know, he never got to to do what I do, but he was so much better than most people. And his life ran a different direction. And but I've always been it was his fault, I'm talking to you now. Um and I've always wanted to sort of do as much as I can of the stuff that he was into because yeah. then I can sort of say, Hey, this thank you, you did this, you know. Um Yeah, that's a long story. Um 
uh, stuff in 2000 AD because they tend to come up with amazing stories. Mm. Um, I've always got a soft spot for Alien. Yes. And I know there's, there's there's a lot of those comics um, that forever seem to be coming out. It, it's great. Um, I'd love to work on some Marvel, like yeah. that. We, uh, and gen- generally, stuff. sorry. Oh, uh, Marvel started re- uh, releasing stuff now that they got the now that Disney got the rights. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I, I don't uh, outside of 2000 because I am that predictable. Um, I don't really have things that I you know specifics that I'd want to work on. You know, if I can wangle another 30 years of not starving to death by drawing pictures for cash, I'm kind of happy. I, I tend toward the the darker kind of grittier stuff because it's just fun Mm. that's my thing um but i don't have specifics maybe i should have specifics i have this list but it's like i'm not sure it's a very specific list it's just the kind of the pie in the sky stuff you know um but direction to go to yeah i guess yeah Maybe not the end product, but as you said you don't get to choose your project even if it's uh even if it's a dream project maybe you head towards not what you want and you might a different so it's always funny i know obviously you're uh you're you're a pro but you know people always say about things like working for people who don't know there's nothing wrong with working for the big two but most of us find that that isn't what you want to do and you find that out quite soon usually as well um it, everyone's different um you know if, if you want to go and work for them go and work for them you know mm. there, there's there's like a million characters they get to play with you know there's mm-hmm. there's plenty of things to be getting on with in those universes you know um it's interesting me and lizzie were having this conversation of like you know what would happen if you got to one of your mountain tops and um it was a, more of a discussion about career versus specifics of you know publishers but we were talking about it and and kind of we agreed that it's just like we well, just go looking for more mountains yeah yeah you, you, yeah. you don't you don't stop you don't go all this downhill from here. You just kind of go, well, I've done that, and it was amazing, hopefully. Um, but you just go looking for other things to do because otherwise you, I think you probably stagnate, I think, if you get stuck on the one thing and you've done that and then that's it. And stagnation doesn't sound like it would be much fun. No, not at all, not at all. Oh, we've got, a, we've got about 10 minutes left, so um, I'll ask you uh, just a quick quick one. Um, uh, first of all, have you got any conventions lined up? Have got any, I, think we're, we're, I think we've got a table for Thought Bubble, I think. Mm. I have to ask Lizzie. She tends to be in charge of like the, the, the admin side of, <laughs> of what we go. do. Um, I'm pretty sure we've got a table there, um, but I don't think we've got anything else lined up yet. We have a... We have a an outside chance of trying to put a book together for th- Thought Bubble, but the way my workload is going at the moment, I don't know how likely that's going to be. But I, mm. you know, ideal world and everything, it'd be lovely to go. I think it's it's going to be a good one for everyone. A lot of people we've spoken to want to go to Thought Bubble and, and the Lakes, of course, as well. We just spoke to Rachel Smith, mm. and um, cool. It's uh, that's that's going to be a good one for a lot of people. I think that's going to get people back into the flow. Hopefully, it'll go ahead as well. We'll, uh, we'll have to see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, ideal world situation, and, and everybody, mm. you know, mm. as jabbed up as we can be, and you know, safe and whatever. But yeah, I, th- I think it'd be nice to get in back in and kind of just see some friendly faces, you know. It'd be nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I normally ask a couple of uh, odd questions at the end of these uh, chats, as if the ones I've asked already haven't been odd enough. Uh, one of them was um, one of them. One of them is not mine, but one of them is uh, one of them. Basically, is always a versus question. And uh, we're just looking at your art earlier. Who would win in a fight between Nemesis, as in 2080s Nemesis, and uh, and Konami's um, uh, uh, Pyramid Head? Because you've drawn them both, you know. Oh, there's a question. Nemesis versus Pyramid Head. Um, well, Nemesis would win the fight because he'd probably just deal out loads of damage and then spit out acid all over Pyramid Head. The problem would be that Nemesis would then have to go to sleep at some point and Pyramid Head would reappear and then yeah. just haunt him forever and drive him mad. I think that's probably what would happen. I think this tends to be Pyramid Head's thing. He'll just show up. There's not yeah. much you can do about it after that. 
No, no, he's your uh, psyche or something, isn't he? So he's, uh, he's yeah. just going to uh, haunt you for a Call it a tie. <laughs> yeah. Very, very <laughs> bloody tie. Um, I've got a question that's not from me. From me. It's, I don't know who's actually um, asked me sorry. this. Uh, I realised, previous question, music, Led Zeppelin. Oh, yes. yes. So if, I could do, if I could do a thing, it would be about Led Zeppelin. Let's go with that. That, that. That's, yeah, I can imagine that being quite an eclectic, uh, quite a varied uh, thing as well. You can, um, can have a lot of fun with that. Yeah. I think you could. Anyway, that's sorry. a gold star. No, that's no, fine. Um, somebody's asked me this. Ricky wrote it down for me to ask. Um, ask why the Seattle Seahawks suck. <laughs> um, I wonder why. Because, well, he's a 49ers fan and he doesn't know what he's yes. talking about, basically. Um, you know, you're, you're on thin ice there, mate, because you haven't won much of anything in the last few years. So, uh get back in your box and Ricky's run away now as well so you can't even hear that but <laughs> I, I think he knows it's true so well, you know I'll let him know after this he's, he's wandered off somewhere so uh, to warm up perhaps um, but uh, yeah uh, what was I going to ask um, so what, what's, uh, what's what's coming up soon then for you What, uh, what is there anything you can tell us about um, uh, not specific. I can't really say much because there's some weird things happening at the moment fun but but kind of weird. There's a there's a few anthologies that are coming out that I'll be involved in um, that you can find out about if you follow me on Twitter or somebody else that, that will be involved. I, I, there's a few anthologies I think they're going to make a bit of noise that I've been involved with. Um, uh, what else am I doing? I am doing uh, finishing off a story called Hex Loader with a writer called Dan Whitehead. That will be for <laughs> planned to be for Thought Bubble, where we did three issues a couple of years ago, then got busy with other things. And so I'm going to try and finish that off, which will be another two issues. And then I think Dan's planning on collecting that all for Thought Bubble. Uh, mm -hmm. I've got um, uh, a book called The Screaming Hand coming out um, with uh, Keck W, who's a 2000 AD writer. Um, it's a 70s kind of paranormal weirdy woo thing um, that we are uh, developing. Um, what else am I doing that I can tell you about? Um, I think that's about it for the for the for this. There's lots happening. It's 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 it's. A, I've been very lucky. Just check week. the reams and reams of NDAs and go. Nope. I know. Nope. Yeah. Nope. It's it's a terrible way to answer a question. I know. But but um, there's. Um, there's there's quite a lot coming out this year. I've been quite quite fortunate, um, and basically by kind of December, they'll you'll be sick of hearing about me. No, I'm sure that's not going to be the case at all. <laughs> what about uh, is there um, what about disconnected press? What's uh, what's next for uh, what the anthologies well, and things like that? Yeah, we we we've talked about putting out a story that we uh, it was a short that got rejected from uh, a different thing from last year um hmm. this means last year oh, um, yeah. clearly uh but yeah we're talking about um putting that into development and possibly making it a, a sort of a either a pitch for a publisher or putting it out ourselves which would be kind of like a 60 odd page kind of story excuse me um and that's kind of going to be i can talk about that because because it's us um that's kind of going to be hollywood 1980s movie producers and angels and devils and very cool meeting it's fun to draw um ricky's just come back um they don't suck ricky that's what uh <laughs> that's the general consensus that it gets you it's, um thank you very much for that um uh <laughs> where can people find you uh, in the oh, meantime? Uh, you can find me on twitter uh my twitter thing we doodle is pencil underscore monkey um that's kind of where i hang out um i also have an instagram account which i can't remember the name of but if you just give me a second here um uh, it is called uh connor boyle art connor c-o-n-o-r underscore b-o-y-l-e underscore art because i am incapable of making like a short handle for any kind of social media but basically i'm on those two things if you want to hear me speak go to twitter if you just want to look at the pictures and you can't be bothered listening to me um i put most things i do on instagram so uh, mm -hmm. there's pretty much a record of everything on there cool cool uh well thank you very much for uh for coming along to uh to chat to us yeah, cheers, man. this it's evening uh if you stay on